guys, it's Kelly here, and I am back with the Father's Day card that you guys requested. So I'm actually using a digital stamp for this. Um, these are two separate stamps that are included in the um, set when you purchase it. These are also available as regular stamps if you super love them, but these are from Colorado Craft Company, and they... Um, are part of the Lovely Legs series. And so if you're not familiar with those, they're all scenes and they're so well done, um, but it's only the bottom part of the scene. Um, so ne there's never any faces, but I think they're super cute and I love a good scene card. And most importantly, I love that I didn't have to put it together, <laughs> that I didn't have to put it together, that it's already put together for me. So um, I am gonna link a video below that shows how to use digital stamps in case you're not super familiar with them. Um, it, and it was really helpful for me. Let me explain to you what I'm doing and then we'll go back to talking about the digital stamps. Um, so here what I'm doing is I'm going to show you all of the color combinations, but what I'm doing going in to begin with is I'm just doing some mapping. Uh, if you watch my channel, you know that I do this pretty often when I have a more complicated scene. Um, and it helps me to figure out what colors I need to use and where everything's kind of going and so that just means I'm taking in my lightest color and I'm going in and sometimes I'm filling it all the way in like with the skin tone I know the skin tone is going to be darker um, but with the apron I know it's going to be white so I'm just using the C1 to add just a little bit of shading where I know it's going to be the darkest um, same thing with the grill like I know that it's going to be darker so I can just fill it in um, but so yeah so that that's what I'm doing so First things first with the video I'm going to link below. It is an old video. I do my um, editing or arranging of digital stamps in Word. And I was taught this way um, by a company that I used to work for. <laughs> if you're an old crafter like me, you might re remember them. They were. It was called Make It Crafty. And it was run by a lady named Zoe who was so talented with coloring and drawing and she was amazing. The company isn't open any longer. She decided to uh, shut down the company and move on to other creative ventures, which I actually think was photography. Um, but she did digital stamps as well as physical product. And so she had done this video showing how to manipulate uh, digital stamps uh, in Word really, really easy. Cause it's, it's a program that everybody, well, I shouldn't say everybody, that all PCs have. Um, so if you're a Mac person, it might be different, but if you're a PC, this should be pretty helpful. And um, so I was able to print these out together to make one card. And what I like to do is I just draw myself a square in Word and make it the size of an A2 card or whatever size you're making. And then that way I can fit my elements into that square, delete the square, and know when I print it, it will be the perfect fit for my card front. So that is what I did here. I did another video, which I'll link at the end, with some of their digital stamps that were all florals. And... Um, they actually sent me an email, uh, the owners of Colorado Craft Company said that they had gotten some questions about how I did the layering of the sentiments. And so I looked up the video to send to them and she said that it was terribly helpful. So I'm going to link it below for you guys as well. Why is this a great last minute Father's Day card? Because you don't have to go anywhere to get it. You don't have to wait for anything to be shipped to you. You purchase it, it sends you an email, you download it, you print it, you color it, done. Like so easy. Um, and so I have a bunch of different products for Father's Day, um, but I felt like this was such a good fit for my husband uh, because he does all the grilling. <laughs> he literally does all the grilling. The other thing, there's a bunch of sentiments included in here. So I chose the Happy Father's Day to fill in that top portion. Um, but there's another one which will go on the inside um, that's like it says something, I'm not 100% positive, but like you're my sizzling hot guy or something like that. Because like obviously he's not my father, but I am grateful that he is the father to our children. So I would like to get him a card for Father's Day. And this is very, very sweet. And I didn't even know it, but like for his birthday, I didn't make his card. Like I didn't make him a card because uh, there was so much going on since it was a bigger birthday and I planned this whole party. I didn't make the card and 
later on, like he made the comment to me that he was a little bit disappointed, not with the party or anything like that, but because I didn't make his card because he saves them all. Like I've always made him a card and, and so he saves them. And I didn't know that. And it's very, very sweet. So I wanted to make sure that for Father's Day, I did make his card from me. Uh, I honestly, I made his card from the kids too, but that's neither here nor there. Um, so if you are last minute and you are like, I just need something that is super fitting. These digital stamps are great. There's also another one in the same series. Um, that's like terrific dad. So if your dad's a golfer, or your husband's a golfer and you need a card, that's another really great one. Um, or if you just want to use the sentiments, like this happy father's day sentiment is kind of put together really fun. So you could pair that with like balloons or stars or, you know, something of the like, and it would still be very festive and fun. Um, but yeah, as you could see when I, at the top, I've done like this little sky to kind of fill out the rest of the scene. Um, you can ink blend over them. If you are a person who likes to do ink blending or techniques, you can print out the stamp on a masking sheet. Like I've done that and then trim it out, uh, like you would with masking paper and use it to mask your image. So you could do layering and ink techniques in the background and stuff like that. So they're, they're really, uh, once you get more comfortable with them, they're really very versatile. And I love that. That means I can have new images whenever I need them. And for me, not planning ahead, because I, you know, I'm, I mean, we all are. We're very busy people. Sometimes I don't always get to do that. And so having a digital image that I can just print, or if you have older kids, they could print this and color this um, for their dad. And it would be, it, it's super cute because the whole scene's already put together for you. So anyway, that's that. We talked yesterday about um, like the making of the dinner and all of you commiserated with me, which I totally, <laughs> I, I feel seen. I appreciate you. Um, but the one thing that Eric always does do is grill because I am afraid of the grill. I'm not embarrassed to admit that. The propane makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to do it. And so he does all of our grilling. And um, so I thought that this was, was pretty, pretty fitting. What you see for the most part is me adding shading any point where two places meet or any point where one object lays across from each other. And so here, like with the folds and the clothes, like in the apron and in the shirt, I'm just following the line that the illustrator already put there. If there's a line, I know there's going to be a shadow. And so I add my darkest shading right along that line. You don't need to extend it out. A line will do you. Like just put a line of your darkest color just use the tip of the marker very little pressure and just do a little line and it will really go pretty far to helping your folds look like folds for the skin tone I my husband <laughs> like I, I don't think it's any secret on my channel my husband is black he's very light skinned um and so I knew that the skin tone needed to be a bit darker to be more fitting for my husband. Um, and so I left off normally, I do an E50, an E00, an E11, and an E04. I left off the lightest color thinking that would maybe be enough. It wasn't. Like, he's darker than this. <laughs> I truly hope uh, Caitlin grows up to um, have more melanin than I do because I'm a very pale woman, <laughs> very pale woman. And I, I think that, um, she would probably like to be less pale. Um, I, and I think she, well, I think she's beautiful either way, but, um, I think she'd be more beautiful if she had a darker skin tone. <laughs> so here I, his needed to be darker. So I went in with an E33 and it doesn't undo any of the shading that I've done. And I just glazed over the top of the shading that was already there. And that is going to work for me to make that a bit darker. So a bit more true to life. Now, honestly, I probably could have done a shade or two darker because in the summer he is way darker than this. This is like his winter color. Um, but anyway, uh, so I kept everything pretty simple as far as like the choosing of the colors. Uh, red is his favorite color. And so that's why I went with the red shirt and the red accents. The green made sense because of the grass and it's a complementary color to red. Everything else is neutrals. And so as far as the things on the grill or the bottles, I just went... I just repeated each color. So if like the bowl is blue, one of the bottles is red, one of the bottles is green, one of the bottles is gray. I just repeated it. Same thing for the things on the grill. Some of the things are gray, which I would, you know, assume would be like a grilled onion or something like that. Um, 
Some of them are brown, would be your meats, and then some of them are green and red. Um, so maybe it's like some peppers or something like that. But I just tried to repeat the same colors. One, so I wasn't adding anything that didn't need to be there, um, you know, as far as like having to list my colors. And two, um, so that everything was matchy-matchy. It was a cohesive look. Um, so yeah, so that's that. We are gearing up for Father's Day here in our household because we are a blended family. Peanut goes to his father on Father's Day, just like even if it's not my day, he comes to me on Mother's Day. So we celebrate our Father's Day. Um, we're going to celebrate on Saturday. And so that way he can be here to celebrate. Um, both of our families are coming. So my dad, his dad, um, both Nathan's grandpas uh, will will be here for us to celebrate. So I have quite a bit of baking to do tomorrow. Um so we'll see we'll see how it shakes out for me. Uh, in addition to it being Father's Day weekend, one of my best friends, Amy, her son is can you even believe we're old enough that her son is graduating high school? Her son is graduating high school and getting ready to go to college. And so his graduation party is also this weekend. And she had asked me probably like two or three months ago if I would make the cupcakes for his party. Um, so I have that on my agenda as well. So tomorrow I spent plan to spend my entire day baking and then if I get to work on something great but really I need to knock out the baking for the weekend um so that way when I'm making the sides and stuff on Saturday all of my baking is done um so yeah so that's that's what we have planned for this weekend I hope that you guys have something planned to celebrate the uh wonderful dads in your life um and I hope you have good weather for it we are was calling for rain uh, and I, but I believe that they have changed it now and pushed the rain back a little bit. Uh, here's hoping because, you know, we just built this deck and it'd be nice if we could use it. Just saying, <laughs> just saying, just throwing a little, just a little prayer up there, Lord. Um, for the, uh, what utensils, like the, the tongs and the little meat fork, I guess is what it's called. Um, I went with black as well as with the tires. And then you're going to see later on, like right now, the grill looks very flat um, because there isn't a lot of sh darker color. There's no contrast. And so it has a very hard time kind of popping out. So once I get all of the coloring done for the items on the grill uh, and then the fence, I'm going to go back in and really darken up that inside and it's going to help give it a lot a lot more dimension. One of the things uh, that's interesting about this image is the smoke that is drawn in there. And so what I did was I just used warm grays and I didn't, I wasn't too heavy handed. I left lots of white area and where anywhere that the illustrator had drawn the lines, I added a little bit of shading. And then for the rest of the smoke, I just picked you know, uh, like one or two areas to the left and maybe three or four areas to the right where I just did some little dots of darker color and then blended it out. Um, so that way it, because obviously smoke when it's closer to its source is very thick and is less transparent, but as it dissipates, it gets much more transparent. And so I wanted that to kind of blend out. Um, I used a colorless blender to help me. So I did all my shading and then I went back in with a colorless blender to kind of aid me with the blending of the smoke. Um, so if if you're trying to get two things to, to blend and you need them to be lighter, like you need them to kind of fade to nothingness, uh, your colorless blender is your friend. It's not just for fixing boo-boos. You can use it for techniques too. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. This is a shorter video for us because I didn't have to do any of the stamping. Um, there is one more idea that I had for Father's Day, and I don't know, I don't know what this weekend is going to look like. If I can get it done today, it's not going to help you. It's not going to help you for um, Father's Day because it will be. It'll probably be posted on Father's Day. 
Um, but it may help you for like birthdays or things like that. And I think it's a really, it'll be a really fun technique. So I'm going to try to see if I can knock that out and get it done. Um, I do have another video hop that I am participating in. So that project takes precedence. Um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to get it all done because I'm solo parenting tonight. Um, just because you know how our schedules are. I don't got to tell you guys. You've been here a while. You know. Um, and so I am... I'm going to be solo parenting, so I'm not sure if I'll be able to knock both of them out, but I will give it, I will give it a good old college try and see if I can do it. If not, maybe I'll just keep that for, um, uh, what will I keep it for? I will, well, no, I'll just share it and then you guys can just, you know, use the technique whenever you need it. Why sit on it? Honestly, like why, why? There's no point. I'll just share it if I can, if I can get it done. If not, I'll, I'll do it maybe for my father-in-law's birthday. Um, so yeah, so we'll, we'll see whether or not that can get done. Um, several of you in the past couple of videos, um, I've been just, these videos have just been going up and up and up and the views have been going down and down and down. And <laughs> I know that's just because there's been so many of them and the videos are always relatively long. So hopefully you'll get back to them when you get back to them. Like I understand that. Here's me with the colorless blender that I was explaining earlier. Um, and I am using it to fix a few boo-boos while I'm at it. Uh, but, um, I feel like I've just been, there's been a lot of videos. So not that I, I I'll probably go back to my regular posting schedule, um, next week where it's just like maybe, you know, anywhere between two and four videos here's a, that um that contrast that i was talking about and you're gonna see it's really gonna help the grill pop by making it darker and just give it a ton more dimension because then it really looks like you're looking to the inside of the grill and it's not all one note so when i tell you guys to embrace your darker colors like this is what i'm talking about you could see how flat it was before and now going in and just adding a bit of darker color i'm using the dark the C9 to be like the racks, um, as well as the fold in the lid. And uh, that just really helps it kind of pop out. Now that the coloring is done, I'm going to go in and add some white highlights. This Father's and the Happy Father's Day has, um, like the font is drawn where it's a negative. And so I thought that was super cute. I filled in the negative so that it was white, like you couldn't see the blue sky through it to help it kind of come forward a little bit more. And then, of course, I'm going to add a bunch of white accents to my items, um, to the grill especially, uh, and to the little utensils he, they're using, and then just a little bit to the towel, just to give it a little bit of a pattern, texture, stripey kind of vibe, just to make it something, just to make it a little extra. I think everything can be a little extra. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in. This is the clear lacquer pen from Hero Arts. It's very similar to Glossy Accents. And I'm going to be honest with you, if I had had my Glossy Accents on hand, I probably would have used that because the tip is a bit finer. And I think I would have had um, an easier time getting into these little smaller spots. Um, but I used it to do the knobs on the grill as well as the utensils, the bottles, the bowl, and the tires. And that just adds a little bit of extra sign. So that's it. That's the whole card. Thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.